push towards me. Sweet. Remove the power from the unit you're working on. Gonna recover the refrigerant. I am not going to be reusing this as it is a blended refrigerant and I don't know what percentage is in there and what percentage is not. So I'm gonna recover all of this and then just put in virgin refrigerant. Open our valves to the gauges, both sides for a faster recovery. Open our tank. Gonna purge. Switch to recover. Unhook the electrical while the system is recovering. These are our low voltage wires from the thermostat from the inside air handler. You want to be careful with this as they may have power. If they have power and the red touches a ground or metal, it will trip the transformer. So it's smart to secure the power to the air handler downstairs so you don't risk shorting out the 24 volt transformer. See there's bare wire everywhere that rubs against metal with the power on it will pop that transformer get these out of the way I'll clean up that low voltage later it's been less than five minutes this thing was so low already it's already recovered I just uh, topped this off yesterday shut down on your gauge valve Remove the gauges. I'm not going to use these for a while until we're recharging the system. I'm going to remove the Schrader core from the liquid line. All right, got my nitrogen bottle hooked up. I might as well remove this valve for a while. It's windy out today. I need to hurry up. Storm clouds are coming in. Now you need a nitrogen regulator to do this. I've got this. I'm going to close this all the way. I've got the valve open. And then just ever so slightly run just a trickle of nitrogen through the line while um, unsweating the unit to displace oxygen and prevent um
Gotta hurry up. Storm clouds are coming in. So here's a problem you may run into. Um, this doesn't fit that well. This is where the 15% solder comes in. I'm gonna shove this in and then just kinda clamp down on this a little bit. But the 15% solder fills gaps real good. But you don't wanna do a little more. There we go. Now that solder can fill in the gaps right here pretty easily. I am gonna remove this suction valve core. Now these come pre-charged. All the refrigerant is sitting behind this king valve right here. So as long as that is closed, we are good. I am gonna hook up my nitrogen again when I sweat this in. Now, this says 250 degrees. We gotta keep this cool, so. I'm gonna wrap this with a wet rag. Not, I cannot get any moisture in there or it's gonna make the vacuum bad. So. I want to try and keep it out of there as well. All right, I've got that nice and wrapped. Got a little bit of nitrogen purging through there. We got to make this weld quick because I don't want to get this too hot. So let's do it quick and let's do it right the first time. I like to set the regulator to 200 PSI and then just come over here and soap bubble the fittings and then check for leaks that way and then get this bad boy in a vacuum. Pretty satisfied that my braces are good even though they look like crap but in my defense it's uh it was pretty gusty while I was brazing so that's my excuse. Now I'm gonna let the nitrogen out and start getting the vacuum pump ready. While the nitrogen's uh, bleeding out of the system, I'll show you my vacuum pump setup, yellow jacket vacuum. Got my micron gauge right at the uh, yellow jacket port. Three ace hoses. And I've got the core removal tools, vacuum rated, Apion attached to the end of the three ace hoses for a nice quick vacuum. I'll leave a link in the description below to my vacuum pump setup it just makes life a lot easier especially when you're doing about 40 to 50 of these in a summer season I am going to remove both valve cores and with the valve core removal tools I can put these back in without um, worrying about breaking back without worrying about any air or anything entering Got my gauges up here. Both of these valves are closed. I'm gonna use my my uh, my blue line, and I'm gonna hook it up top right here. So when it comes time to break vacuum, I can just easily do so without allowing any air into the system. So this hose right here is gonna be under vacuum, but I'm gonna pull from these to evacuate the system. I've got my valve closed right here. My micron gauge, I'm gonna turn on my vacuum pump and let this pull down. 
Once it gets below 500 microns, I'm going to open up and start evacuating the system. We are now under vacuum, and while this is going on, I'm going to set this down and just start hooking up all the electrical and cleaning up. This is a 220 volt system, so we've got 120 volt going to each lug on the contactor. Everything in this is brand new, so we don't have to worry about swapping out any contactors or anything. It's just uh, pretty much plug and play, plug and go. Hooking up the 24 volt to the contactor right now. All right, we're at 171 microns right now. Um, I'm going to valve this off, I'm going to shut these valves and then turn the vacuum pump off. I've now got my micron gauge hooked up right at the suction valve, I'm going to turn my pump back on. Open this valve up, open these valves up. This is our second round. We're down to 278 microns. I am gonna valve this off. It's important that you valve this off before shutting off the vacuum pump as you can, actually it doesn't even matter, but um, if you were doing a compressor, it can actually suck the oil from the compressor back into the vacuum pump. But I'm just gonna show you good practice. I'm gonna turn this off. And then we're just looking for a giant rise in our micron gauge. Um, if it like shoots up to a thousand above a thousand that's going to tell me that there's still moisture in the system from there we would do uh two or three two or three times evacuation where we'd purge it with nitrogen and then evacuate down again to get all of that moisture out of the system um, this is holding pretty good at 340 microns with a super slow rise so i'm gonna break this vacuum right now to do that i'm gonna come over here Here's my gauges. Um, <clears throat> I've already got my suction line hooked up to the gauge. I'm gonna, these are valved off. Open up my refrigerant. We've got that open. I'm gonna purge this line. Get all the air out of that line. And then I'm just gonna break vacuum. So I'm gonna open this valve. The refrigerant's gonna flow through here, through the hoses, into the system, and break that vacuum. I'm not pushing any air into the system. I just want enough to break vacuum. And I certainly did that. Maybe a little too much. Nothing too crazy though. And from there we're going to reinsert our valve cores. I'm going to valve these off right here. Disconnect my hoses. A little bit of refrigerant's going to come out. That's fine. insert my valve core with my valve core removal tool I'll 
open that up. And it takes a little practice to get the hang of these, but once you do it a couple times, it's pretty easy. Do the same thing with the other one. All right, so we got our line um, pressurized with 410A. Um, you may be asking why I didn't put a filter dryer in. A uh, liquid line filter driver comes, dryer comes pre-installed inside the Goodman unit. Now, here's our king valves. Behind the king valves lies a refrigerant. These come pre-charged for 15 feet of line set. This unit is on the fourth floor. So that's probably about 30 feet of line set. Our charge might be right on, but I'm going to open these king valves. The tool I use to do this is just a service wrench, service ratchet. I'll leave a link in the description on where to get these. You don't have to use these, but it just makes it a lot quicker. You can use any Allen wrench. I'm going to open the liquid line first. And then backseat it just a uh, little bit. Open our suction line. Put the caps back on to the king valve. Got my clamp. I am gonna adjust the refrigerant charge by subcooling. Thermostat is on downstairs. I'm gonna reapply high voltage to the unit. Right off the bat, our uh, sub cooling is at five degrees. This unit just started, so I would recommend letting it run for at least five minutes be before um, dialing in the refrigerant charge. So we're still sitting at about four degrees subcool. I'm gonna add a little refrigerant. Um, these field piece clamps, by the way, are absolute garbage. I would not recommend ever buying them, but I've had this one for about 10 years, so the connection's not really good. As you can see, I've gotta kinda put pressure on it. But let's add a little refrigerant. We just want to do short spurts. Doesn't take much. Reason we're charging by subcool is this unit uses the TXV as a metering device. We have that short spurt that I just did, gave us six subcooling. So we're gonna do another one. There's plenty of videos out there on how to charge by superheat and subcool, so I'm not going to get into that. This uh, meter right here automatically calculates the subcooling and your superheat if you change it to that setting. So we're at about 9 degrees right now. We're almost there. I'm going to shoot this up to about 10. All right, so we got 11 subcool. Suction pressure's at 110. There's no heat load inside right now. That's why our suction pressure is so low. Just check out the superheat real quick. Make sure our TXV is functioning. All right, we got a 36 degree coil, 55 degree line temp. That's a 19 degree superheat, 11 degree subcooling. This unit's good to go. I'm gonna unhook everything. Hope you found this video useful. How to replace a condensing unit. I put as much information in this as I could to try and help other technicians that are certified to handle refrigerant and work on air conditioners replace them in a professional manner. If I left anything out, which I'm sure I did, go ahead, leave me a comment. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Hit that like button if you found this video useful. But until the next fix, I'm Dave Spates. See you on the next one.